Chapter 1 You are listening at FameTV.info I was suffocating that IT felt like someone was pressing on my neck that I opened my eyes while struggling, Hugh. Hugh. It was getting harder to breathe. My head was aching as if it were being squeezed, crazy, how long did I run yesterday, I can't go to work in this condition, more likely I'll have to take half a day off, knock, knock, I turned my head reflexively to the door. My eyes widened in an instant that a wall with a strange picture, a door with a living grain of wood, and a bed with curtains, this isn't my room, confused, I tried to get up from bed that I needed to find out where I was, but the blanket was too heavy, what's going on? What on earth is with this arm? Reminds me of a branch, I pulled the blanket with all my might, listening to the rough beating of my heart that I was out of breath even though I just rolled out of the blanket, mirror. Thud that my body tilted even before my legs touched the ground, rule nim. The door opened and a man in a black suit hurriedly approached, are you all right? Rule. The stranger looked at me in question, why does the name sound so familiar? The man who appeared to be a butler easily lifted me onto the bed, you almost got in trouble. The fever just dropped this morning. Are you hurt anywhere? The butler asked me who was looking around, rule satiria, that was the name that came to my mind right away. The man standing before me became nervous, do you still have a fever, Mr. Rule? The butler carefully put his hand on my forehead with his white gloves on, the fever went up again. I'll get your meds ready right away. I grabbed the butler with my scrawny hands. If the name I said was wrong, he would have questioned me, the man gave a chuckle, mirror. What? The mirror. Even talking seems to sap my breath away, would you like me to bring it, asked the butler. I stared into the butler's eyes as a response, the butler bowed his head after much consideration, I'll be right back. When the butler left, I felt my body exhausted as if I had been running for an hour straight, it couldn't have been, no way, the owner of this body, rule. That rule satiria, rule satiria dot a character in the first volume of the web novel, SSS dot class night. A sickly aristocrat. Rule had an unknown disease, but it was never revealed what it was, how could it have been known, when he died in the middle of the first book. Knock, knock, I'm coming in. Cassian, the butler came into the room carrying the mirror with a faint smile. He brought the mirror to the man on the bed, judging that he didn't even have the strength to lift the mirror, only after seeing the reflection looking back on the mirror did the sense of reality set in, what was staring back at him was a sickly face, showing the effect of a long bout of illness, the skin was pallid and the eyes were made prominent by the darkened shade around them. The unmanaged grey hair grew wildly like weed, and blurred green eyes were distorted, what a fucking joke, rule satiria. I become a weak and useless nobleman, Cassian. The butler looked at me anxiously at this breaking voice of mine, you're so pretentious. If anyone saw it, he could be mistaken for the butler as someone loyal who was worried about his owner, and was heartbroken after checking his master's condition, yes, Mr. Rule. I waved my hand lightly that him why body was out of breath just by saying how weak it was. Mr. Rule, are you out of breath? Cassian handed me something that was of reach on the table that a small finger looking object similar to a flute, it may be hard for you sir, but please breathe in this breath slowly. After hesitating for a while, I bit the breath in my mouth. And no matter how much Cassian wanted to kill me, it's not time why et that as I slowly inhaled the breath, it felt like the thing that had been tightening my chest loosened, don't hold your breath and use this magic tool. So it's a magic tool, the unfamiliar words felt strangely familiar that I looked at the magic tool with a lightened breathing, that was a cut in my own life from now on, Mr. Rule, today's meal. Cassian's eyes, which contained worries, did not change as I looked at him calmly, I'm going to eat today. Bring it. Since you're sick, you should eat a lot. Cassian smiled broadly, okay, I'll get it right away. After taking the medicine. Yes, Mr. Rule. As soon as Cassian went outside, I rubbed my arm. Crazy guy. Cassian pretended to be a butler, but he was actually an assassin. To be exact, he was an assassin hired by Rule's cousin who was aiming for the Satiria family. Rule was a castaway. He was pushed to the outskirts of the territory and lost Satiria to his cousin. Cough, cough. 
I gripped my throbbing chest at the sudden cough, damn this body, how I wish I could be the main character of this novel that I thought everything over again, SSS. Class Night, was an unfinished novel that I in other words, no one knew the ending. What a fucking joke that I patiently closed my eyes and re-opened them, there was light in my hazy eyes, let's live for now. Let's live on, I had to live on, even without knowing the ending, asterisk asterisk asterisk, do you like it? I put the spoon down at Cassian's question, Cassian looked at me and gently folded his hands, while standing by the side, Cassian showed traces of an eerie smile, asshole. I was disgusted by him acting like that in front of the sickly. It tastes bad. It may be because of the medicine that Rule himself takes or because of the disease, but I can't even tell what the food tasted like, I'm sorry. Cassian clenched his folded hand hard that I grabbed the spoon again, but I'm still going to eat. That's right, you need to nourish your body, shouldn't you live? I smiled at Cassian that it was a smile that revealed his insidiousness that I have to find a way to live first, Cassian. The weak voice called Cassian, however, in a different gaze than usual, Cassian thought that the collar of his shirt had become unusually stuffy, yes. Cassian looked at Rule in response. Nothing has changed that he looked as if everything was normal as usual that I drank the soup gracefully with my trembling hands. The noble attitude contrasted with my pale face let's not pretend. Yes. Pretend. Don't be nervous. I stopped talking and took a breather in the middle. This is annoying. Cassian didn't know what was annoying, but he was clearly more displeased with the eyes of Rule, looking at him, I can't speak much. But when do you want to kill me? One corner of my dry lips tilted up. Cassian's hand, which had been folded, loosened. Laughter leaked from his lips, oh, you knew. He turned into a hunter who saw prey instead of anxiety in his eyes, of course. I looked at the hunter and answered leisurely, Cassian drew a chair while looking around and sat next to Rule. Then he unbuttoned his suit and crossed his legs, I'm going to die two weeks from now because I can't overcome my illness that I'm my cousin, my neta satiria is prepared for it to happen, isn't he? That's right. Well, anyone can tell by sight that your eyes are full of greed. I laughed. Cassian's confidence was amusing, and I as Rule, who had firmly believed in him without knowing that he was an assassin sent to kill him, the thought itself was ridiculous, Cassian messed up his neatly arranged hair, this is very strange. What? I'm sure you didn't know anything until yesterday, how did you know today? Isn't that weird? What do you know after only half a year? After coughing a couple of times, I finished eating the soup, this damn body. I can't even eat comfortably, Cassian took out the dagger he had hidden in his arms and toyed it lightly, it's also a time to know a lot in half a year. Anyway, I'd like to hear what made my master speak up. Lord. Call me. No matter what anyone says, Satyria's lord was rule, Cassian stopped toying the dagger and looked greatly surprised, you are the most honest person I've ever seen. At the derisive remark, L returned it as it was, because it's me. Ha ha ha. Cassian dropped his dagger and held his stomach laughing that I continued to eat silently while watching him, the laughter paused after a moment, are you serious? Yes. You're going to die. Not in two weeks, but today. Do you know how hard my head was spinning because of that? I won't die. Cassian suddenly got out of his seat and placed the finely folded paper packet down, next to the tray, this is the medicine you should take today. You know, without this medicine, you wouldn't last a day. I won't die. At his determined answer, Cassian smiled and looked at Rule, I'm often told that I'm quite easygoing. But it seems like you're more than I am. Like a child watching a circus, Cassian was colored with expectations of finishing Rule. As he said, Rule, a character in the SSS. Class Night, was so weak that he could not even survive a day without medicine, but I was different, though my body was weak, I wasn't sick to the extent that I couldn't think. I raised my finger and pointed at Cassian, you'll protect me. Yes. I decided to give Cassian a blow, heirloom, you want the turbulent day, don't you? Cassian shut his mouth, my cousin's gonna give it to you, 
right, although his expression didn't change, it was fully predictable how embarrassed Cassian was now. Cassian was aiming for a sword called Turbulent Day. A sword known to have cut down an evil hero, there was no special force in it anymore, but Cassian was a sword collector. The things he could do, if he had the opportunity to hold the legendary family treasure of Satyria that everyone yearns for but couldn't have, but he was in the wrong about something though, asshole. A word that was not at all noble popped out of rule, only then did Cassian's mouth move. What do you want to say? Water. I looked at the cup. The initiative in the conversation has been handed over to him, Cassian crumpled his impression and poured the water, slowly, I drank the water, making me tired, rule. This time, Cassian called his name, passed down through the bloodline. Through the bloodline. It's me, rule Satyria, that is the current head of Satyria. Rule laughed at Cassian and continued, I'm the only one who knows the location. You're being cheated. No, way. Damn it. The fishing rod is bent greatly that I end the novel, my cousin did not know the location of the heirloom. But the location is obvious, the heirloom would naturally be in a secure place with tight security. Listen to the full novel at fametv.info, direct link in the description.